Hey guys, first off, I'd like to say that Joe and I and my wife, Carmen, wish everyone a beautiful May, and we hope during the month of May you get blessed and receive good blessings, the kind of blessings that God would want you to have, uh, maybe not necessarily what we would want to have, but what God would want us to have. Second, I want to talk to you um, about boxing, coaching, and training. Um, there's always great trainers, always great boxers. And there will, there will continue to be. But boxing is going through, in my opinion, a change that uh, is more concerned with the growth of the sport than the quality of the sport. And we are getting to a point, and this message could be for a lot of trainers out here too. A lot of folks have gyms, maybe they have a chain of gyms, uh, maybe they have some amateur champions, maybe they have this or that or the other. And if you guys hear background music, we're in real life in Colombia, South America, and there's if you don't know, you need to educate yourself that people in the third world do not know necessarily how to behave. Uh, I often relate behavior uh, in third world countries to that of dogs. Because when a dog is up under a blanket and that dog can't see you, that dog assumes that you cannot see he or she under the blanket. Now think about that and let that sink in. That's third world thought. <laughs> if I like it, enjoy it, everybody around me will. So it's not a lot of peace. It's a lot of, there's a lot of happiness in third world countries. A lot of uh, uh, festive, festiveness and uh parties and things like that. I just wish that people would look at May 1st for what it is. It's a Communist Workers Day. It's not a Labor Day, Third World. Uh, most of you have no idea that May 1st is Labor Day in most of the Third World, uh, which is sick and it's sad. <laughs> uh, it's not really a Labor Day. It's a Workers Day. There's nothing good about it. I go look up May Day. All right, back on point here. Uh, a lot of uh, trainers feel that the the way they train, maybe they uh, show a box boxer a particular way to slip a punch, just as an example, and they are convinced. Not unlike that dog under the blanket. You see, see how God just flows it out? I had no intention of saying it and putting this out like this, but it's a perfect analogy. Not unlike the dog under the blanket. I uh, believe that's the only way because they cannot see. Uh, we subscribe to a guy. I will have to go and look at his name. He's got about six or seven hundred subs. Not many people are watching this guy because there's nothing flashy. Uh, he lives in an older home and he's got a bunch of stuff around him. And, uh, uh, it's different. It's different. They'll get out on the, in the backyard on a, a wet, muddy surface and lay some plywood down. And train. He's an older guy, and this guy learned from all of the good trainers 
over the span of uh, Joe Frazier's career, the trainers that worked with Joe Frazier had worked with this man, and this man's worked with a lot of famous trainers. And the first thing he will tell you, the first thing he will tell you is, you've got to look at a boxer, a young boxer, and you've got to figure out their strengths and their weaknesses. And you, as a boxing coach or a trainer, have to uh, adjust and come up with good mechanisms and good ways for that particular boxer. It's not the other way around. You don't get a kid to adjust to everything you're doing. No two kids are the same. You can't train someone that's uh, six inches taller than the, the normal height in their weight class the same as you would train someone who is six inches shorter than everyone in their weight class. Uh, some guys are hard, heavy punchers. I believe that punching can be developed. I, I do. I don't agree with uh, the philosophy that you have to be born. Uh, there, that there's nothing you can do. You're just born with it or you're not. Uh, there's many ways. A guy that's not a, uh, a hard puncher can improve his there's many ways to improve the game through technique uh, improving speed and the velocity which uh, vastly increases the, uh, the the force and the effect of a punch uh, so there's thing there's always something you can do now I want to talk about something else I would ask you if you live in the United Kingdom, for example. Do you trust London? Are they doing this wonderful, great job for you? Are those the thinkers that are running everything? If you live in the United States, do you trust Washington? Are those were the brightest and the best thinkers and the innovators and uh, the, the vast knowledge is at? If you answer yes to that question, you're lost and this video is really not for you because you're under the blanket and you're assuming a lot of things and making an ass out of you and me, you know, the old assume thing. And, uh, but to those who are looking around and can kind of figure, hey, hold on a minute. This ain't right. This ain't right. Um, well, that happens in every sport. Uh, you got good coaching. You got bad coaching. You got different philosophies. Uh, I've got or have been told, told that in the football world, I'm kind of a cross between uh, Bill Parcells and Dick Vermeil. Uh, for those of you that don't really understand uh, NFL football, one was just as mean as a rattlesnake and the other one cried all the time. So people are, are different. And uh, we do things around here. Uh, I would like to think that are very old school. Nothing new, nothing innovative, nothing extraordinary. It's just good old-fashioned work and grit with aggression. Uh, we got a lot of things we need to work on and improve upon a boatload of them. Uh, but guess what? That's every team in the, uh, in the world, in the boxing world. Every one of them. From the guy that just started training yesterday to the, the guy that uh, uh, has been in the business 28 years. It's what you got to do. It's life. You, 
you're improving, you're, you're, you're trying to learn and, and, and move ahead, and we're trying to learn and move ahead too, but make no mistake about it, what we're doing is <coughs> tried, true, and tested, and it works. Uh, we do things that other trainers, it would be beyond, maybe beyond their th think. No, I won't say beyond their thinking because it makes me look like pushing up certain people or myself up here and, and dragging others down. Uh, Joe's got two different styles uh, that we vary, we have variated, uh, just as an example, that have been more effective for him, his body type, his strength, his speed, what he does. And people are just floored. Young boxers are just floored at that. How do you do that? Right? Uh, how, how were you uh, uh, trained in a, what today you'd probably call a Soviet style, we, we just called a amateur style 40 years ago, 45 years ago, 50 years ago. Uh, today you'd probably call that more of a Soviet style. Uh, how, how did you do that? And you're, you're training your kid in a, uh, in more of a Diamato style. How, you know, what's going on there? Uh, nothing's going on. It's easy. You just mix what works, right? Um, Another thing I wanted to talk about is the weakness of the sport. And I don't want you young people, you sit and you watch things, you watch these big fights. I would go back and literally watch fights from the 70s, 80s, and in, in, into the 90s. Uh, and there are other fights that are more recent that are great. Uh, great boxing, great slugging, great events, great heart. Uh, but I would, uh, if you guys go watch uh, Arturo Gatti versus Mickey Ward, you're in for a treat. You watch uh, Tommy Hearns versus Marvin Hagler, you're in for a treat. Uh, Iran Barkley versus Roberto Duran, you're in for a treat. And I'm just naming a few. Uh, Sugar Ray Leonard and Roberto Duran won. Uh, boy, are you going to see a lot of heart going on. Heart you just simply do not see today. And I want to talk about Larry Holmes for a minute. Uh, we all look, in, anyone who loves the sport, whether you love or hate this guy and you're a fan of his or whether you're not, uh, you should admire the fact that uh, Tyson Fury's gotten literally black, knocked black out, as I call it, laying totally flat on the canvas, and boom, gets up. Uh, and you should respect that, and I respect that. But we saw a guy that did it several times. Uh, Two times that I can think of, I just can't remember the one guy's name, but uh, for those of you that have been around and know me, you know that I was friends with Ernie Shavers. I love Ernie Shavers. He was a good man to me. He was an excellent man to me. He did some things for me that I could classify to you as being life-saving for me. Uh, anyway, Shavers is versing Holmes, and I believe it's Shavers puts him down on his butt. And he, he did, how he got, how Holmes got up from that, I'll never know. There was another guy, I just can't think of his name. I've, I've got him in the picture. It's not Greg Page. Uh, 
Ronaldo Snipes, as I believe this guy's name. And Ronaldo just floors Larry Holmes. He gets back up. Maybe these two events were not quite as dramatic. Uh, but you got to understand, cameras aren't the, the dramatic part of boxing. Pay-per-views aren't the dramatic part of boxing. What the announcers are telling you is not the dramatic part of boxing. Uh, so in a lot of these older matches, because of camera angles, close-ups, things like that, you young guys, you kids haven't, haven't seen nothing. And it, it's hard to articulate in your brain exactly how, uh, how much greater boxing was some years ago is it to what it is today boxing today is almost a one size fits all full of fans and th everybody's thankful they are boxing fans but uh, if you're measuring your sport off of who's making the most money uh, you're not following the sport Something's not right with you, but it, 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 you're not a, a, a true sport fan. You're not a true lover of sport, if that's what you're basing uh, your involvement as a fan off of, is how much money somebody makes, how many people go and view uh, your particular guy or this particular guy. Boxing is filled with internet drum. I'm kind of glad we have it because there'd be nobody watching boxing. And I want to tell you uh, what we've seen here recently on a Saturday night. One guy uh, talking to everybody on a Sunday saying, my face was hanging off off of my head. I knew I had to do something and I did it. And then you see that Garcia Tank Davis stuff. Then you see all this stuff. Well, I hit you Ryan in the, you know, some Chinaman apologizing for busting Ryan's ribs up before. Folks, if you hurt you you just delay uh, the fight. You can't go in hurt. And I don't think Garcia went in hurt. I think the boy just quit. I think the boy has the ability to regain anything lost the other night. He's still young yet. Uh, but as it stands right now, we just saw a boy that quit. We saw a bare knuckle guy that his head was, that his face was hanging off his head, that chose to continue. And we saw a boy quit. Neither one of which, because they were, they're both boys, uh, there are top 10 contenders from the 70s, 80s, 60s that would mow through anybody at 135, 140, or whatever. You kids ain't seen nothing. Nothing. These little boys that are up here making millions of dollars would fold very quickly to these real men of yesteryear. So, I just wanted to say that, and I really wanted to stress to these trainers and I'll put a link to this guy down here. It's nothing fancy to watch uh, but this guy learned from some great people. He learned how to coach, how to train, how to teach techniques to boxers from some of the greatest people in the history of the game which is no game by the way and uh there's more than one way to skin a cat. And be careful, trainers, because 
Uh, and another thing I'm seeing in the amateur ranks, I'm not seeing corners stand up for their fighters. There's nothing bad with getting kicked out of a place for a kid that you've pumped up. Yeah, you can win, you can win, you can win. And when the adversity comes, you just keep your mouth shut. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Biggest thing you can do is be kicked out of somewhere for your for your guy, for your kid. That shows class. That shows backbone. That shows intestinal fortitude. And I'm just not seeing it today. So, got another rambling rant for me. Uh, Joe put up across his media. Joe really likes this guy. It's, uh, Richard Torres Jr. Uh, he is a U.S. boxer. He likes the guy a lot. Uh, the guy's 23. Uh, folks have looked at him. He's 5-0. and 5-0 heavyweight. Uh, he's a, an Olympic medalist from 2020. And... A lot of people in the United States are looking at this guy as being a, one of the best prospects that the United States has right now. I really li I like the guy, too. I really do. But Joe put out across his media, he's like, I feel like me and this guy's paths are going to cross. Joe's 14, so there's about nine years, eight or nine years difference in ages between them but the gift that Joe got was at 14 years old people are saying when that time comes you're going to beat this guy <laughs> and those are gifts that can't be replaced folks when somebody offers up words of great encouragement or a belief in your ability uh, what you uh a million dollars came by that. Those are un things you cannot purchase. And we need to be looking for those things. Uh, we need to quit looking for what a dollar bill or a pound or a uh, Deutsche Mark or a peso can buy. And we need to be looking and concentrating on the things that money can't buy. And that's what we need to be relishing in. And because there are filthy, filthy, rich trillionaires running around right now that would make Bill Gates look like a kindergarten kid with concerns to how much money they got or, or, or how much treasure they have. Um, walking around here that don't have two plug nickels to rub together. But they're rich in a treasure that money can't buy. And uh, Joe got some treasure Saturday and Sunday. A whole bunch of gold piled up in that treasure. The people give him positive comments and wonderful statements and encouragement. Uh, you can't buy that for nothing, so... Be thinking about some of these things I said this week. We're putting out a lot. I'm putting out a lot more videos. Joe's still working on getting more comfortable in talking, but you can rest assured. Uh, we'll point out bad things when we see or something that's just really negative or evil. And uh, otherwise, everything's going to be positive around here and be a little deeper in thought from an old guy's perspective and um, much love to everybody and uh, thank you for watching and listening to us and remember 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 you have gifts you've you've already got gifts there's so many things that you can do that you have no idea that you can achieve and do and accomplish you have gifts. Use them. Find them. Use them. And always remember there is more than one way to skin a cat.